Today we learn oh, the basics, though not of wrestling thing. All right, enough. But of puppy training. In training and in life, you can pretend to care, but you can't pretend to show up. Today we learn about three foundational principles, attend, acquire, adapt, and how you can incorporate them into your training to make the most efficient use of your time and to have the best thing possible. <gasps> attend, acquire, adapt. Attendance is the most important variable in any training schedule. It doesn't matter how good your dog is, how good your training techniques are, if you're not putting in the work, if you're not showing up day after day, it will be for nothing. So we have to make sure that we create a regular attendance, training at the exact same time, coming out at the exact same time. The biggest question though is when do we start? How young should I start training my puppy? And the answer is when it seems like fun to them, when they are excited when I have food in my hand and they run up to take it, when I can have the food in my hand and it moves just a little bit, that is when it is time to start training my puppy because that is when all of a sudden, boom, I can start to shape positions because I can get them to follow my hand and wherever their head goes, their body will follow. These little circles turn into a heel uh, going around me, going to the other side, coming back. It is all done through luring, but until it seems like a lot of fun for them to follow your hand, they're not going to want to do it. So attend. When your dog is ready, put in the work day after day. Basics. Luring, and you are going to see the benefits. The second most common question we get is how long should our training sessions be? Just like when to start, they should last for as long as your puppy is having fun. You always want to quit it before they start to go flat, ending on a high note. A 60 second session with an eight week old puppy is all you need. It might just be them coming out if they know how to lure and just having fun chasing your hand. It doesn't have to be amazing every session with a young puppy. The pitfall with attendance is that you don't graduate to more advanced training just because you have shown up week after week, day after day. You have to acquire the skills. For instance, dang, if she cannot lure with my hand directly on her mouth, then I have work to do. If I try to move to a lure that is off of her mouth, it's not gonna work, the dog's gonna get confused, and you're gonna become frustrated. So we have to acquire after we attend before we can try to adapt. She's dying. It is super important to listen to your puppy. You're gonna have multiple days in a row, just fantastic training sessions, and then they're gonna come out one day and seem like they have absolutely no training potential. When that happens, no, it is normal. And notice I said when, not if. You just cut your losses, go to super high reward. Maybe just they chase your hand for two feet and get a big handful of kibble or throw it all on a snuffle mat. Remember that it is about long-term improvement. Long-term improvement. I know, you're just dang. You're dang. Dang. I say listen to your puppy and I'm starting to wonder if she was like giving me appeasement licks. So that's why I stopped rubbing on her to see if she would go or what she would do and she just wants to be a thing. Yeah. Yeah, she just my thing. She was my thing. And now she's ready to go. Listen to your puppy and the signs that they give you because she's thing. Once you have the attendance down and you have acquired the basic skill of this luring on a direct lure, this is when you start to create space. This is when adaptations happen and you make it a little harder and she has to move with some space between your hand and the lure. Never forget the number one thing that when you are training your puppy or new dog is building the love of training, of hanging out with you, of knowing that, oh my gosh, he's got all this yummy treats, kibble, whatever it is, 
just for me. And when we interact, I get to get things that are amazing only for moving around and chasing his hand and having fun. It's because she's dying. Whether we are luring with a ball or with food, we have to have acquired the basics in order to be able to move on and have him adapt. Poop pop. Pop chop. Poopy. Oh, poopy. Uh, Luring with the ball is a much more advanced form because it requires cushy. Control. He wants us so bad. Oh, poop pop. Us. Cushy. And you see, oop. I almost got him there. Cushy. Gotta have that control. So this is more us of what you can expect with more of an advanced dog. He can follow, he can follow, he can follow, he can follow. Cushy. He cannot follow. Buck. He's poop pop. Us. He poop popped. He can follow. He can follow. He can follow. Circle. He poop popped. Buck. The food can be the lure. The ball can be the lure. But when you've got a muggle nuts, even you can be the lure. Fuss. He just the mug nut. So just to address something, I've had a lot of questions recently. You're asking me, why am I shaking my hands? Am I going into jazz hands? Is it a secret dog training technique? And the answer is no. I have a neurological tremor called an essential tremor. I wish I didn't shake my hands. It's completely involuntary. Like if I think, Fuss! oh, see, I, I was trying not to do it. I was going to say, if I think really hard, I cannot shake my hand. But apparently, even when I'm thinking about it, and trying not to shake it, I fail. So just know that that's not some like, oh my gosh, that's how Matt gets attention because he's shaking his hands. Lastly, I want you to remember that dog training is not about one single session. Just like you can't build enough muscle with one workout to see a difference, dog training is about sustained effort over time. But this isn't a no days off mentality. That's just ego driven BS. This is about long-term progress and knowing when it is time to rest because sometimes that's just as important if not more important than the training itself. Taking these days off, reading your dog and knowing sometimes I gave her a command, she is tired. She gave me not the command that I was asking for. I wanted her to run backwards. She went into a sit. I know she's tired. We've been filming for quite a while so her brain is just fog now. And that's a great example. If we were in a training session, I would say, you know what, we're done. I'd bring her over here. I'd put her in a down. I'd grab the food and I would just be like, boom, have it all. Enjoy yourself and on a high note and know that that little mistake is no big deal in the big picture.